you guys freaking out a little bit? <laughs> you are. You wanna know how I know? All the stores everywhere, you freaks. Um, apparently, you can't say um, any words in regards to what I'm referring to because YouTube will demonetize it because they're trying to limit the spread of misinformation. So not only can we not say pew pew words, we also can't say <coughs> words. So we're just gonna call it the CV. You know what that stands for. Um, cardiovascular, uh, it's a heart term because uh, we're, we're doctors on this channel-ish. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the CV today and how crazy all you people are. But I don't blame you, everybody's freaking out and a lot of people don't have a bunch of pew pews that they can go out and hunt with if need be. I've got a contingency plan. I'm not worried. My chickens are laying eggs every day. I also can chop their heads off at any given time. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. We actually really like our chickens and I think I'd get more out of the eggs than I would out of uh, some old chicken meat. Those chickens are, and they're not four years old. They're, they're getting close to expiration date, I'm pretty sure. Um, toilet paper's crazy. Uh, I'm not worried about it though. Would you like to see why? Being the king of the demolition, definitely has its perks. Wesley. Yes, sir. How much do you get paid here? Seven rolls an hour, sir. You've been working really hard. I'm bumping you up to eight rolls an hour. You know what, I need to actually replace that roll, so let me go get that. Whew. Nothing like running out of toilet paper to really ruin your day, you know what I mean? Not our problem, though, because let's check what I got out. Oh, yeah. We actually ordered four of these containers full of toilet paper like two months before the hysteria even happened. I had a feeling some bad stuff was gonna go down. Let's see, I think I'll take these right here. Should be good. That's okay. We got plenty more where that came from. You guys wanna see my hand sanitizer container? Oh, cameraman saying we don't have time, no problem. Why do I have five of these? I only need one. Get out of here. Oh, this shirt? This is our brand new come and take it toilet paper shirt. We wanted to make kind of a joke out of the hysteria over something as weird as toilet paper. So we're only selling this for a limited time, I think through the weekend, and then we're gonna cut it. So if you're interested, link in the description below, bunkerbranding.com, and you can get your own come and take it toilet paper shirt. And the first 19 people, I'm gonna sign a roll of toilet paper and send it with you for free. I'm a sharing guy, I wanna share some of my four containers of toilet paper with you guys. So, link in the description below to your toilet paper shirt. Come and take it. I have signed a lot of weird things, but this may, be one of the weirdest. But you know what? I'm doing it because I love you, Demolish. <laughs> Here comes your free toilet paper. <laughs> Heading to the grocery store now. Meredith and I actually have not um, done anything out of the ordinary at all with all this panic stuff. Um, our refrigerator is the normal amount, which is usually pretty empty. We usually keep like four days worth of food at our house. That's it. We go to the grocery store often um, and just get small amounts. Like we never have a freezer full of stuff or anything. So we have normal amounts and we did not go when everyone else went and went crazy. So I have not seen the grocery stores with empty shelves. So I'm kind of going as a fact finding mission. And then Meredith also said we need some things. So she's going, she has five kids right now. Uh, we have our nephew and niece as well. So Mayor's alone at the grocery store with five children. So I'm gonna go help her to make it through and show you guys what the shelves look like in Central Texas. Just made it here to the grocery store. Lots of open spaces. I mean, like a bunch. Uh, everything seems pretty calm, but I'm sure inside it's just a bloodbath. Like that girl swinging that thing over there. I bet she just killed somebody. It seems people are pretending to be calm, but I bet it's I bet it's insane in there. Let's go check it out. I've entered the killing fields. Also, I've already got like four comments on my shirt. They love it. Uh, now I gotta find the real crazy person in here. My wife with five kids. Toilet paper aisle. Pretty scarce. Not much here. But the water aisle is good to go. <laughs> Plenty of water. Zero toilet paper. Target acquired. Mayor, how's your grocery trip going with five kids? The number of looks I have gotten. Uh, I've gotten really a lot of looks too. For this shirt, did you see it? I've had like four or five people tell me they really like my shirt, which has never happened to me before. I feel famous. There's so much candy here, Lincoln, we're good. Like, what's everybody worried about? We got candy everywhere. Tons of chicken, all the meats over there. We're doing good here. Uh, everyone, calm. My summary is Meredith and I actually did end up buying more than we normally would have but not much, and not because we think it's not gonna be here next week. I didn't buy a bunch of survival stuff. 
uh, we bought a little bit more because we don't wanna have to do that again. The lines were longer than normal. Usually there's one person in line, there were like three people in line. We had to wait for like seven minutes before it's our turn to check out. Terrible guys, terrible. Uh, overall though, it was pretty lame, pretty normal. There was a police officer at each door, which I think, I've, I've I don't think I've ever seen a police officer at the doors before, but they looked super bored. They were just sitting there like this. Like, I guess it's just to make sure no one gets crazy or in any fights or anything, but I think we're past that, honestly. It seems, it seems fine. It seems very normal. It seems like when you're going in the day before Thanksgiving and everyone's just kind of, you know, there's just more people there and they're trying to get a little bit more than normal. That's it. All the normal supplies are there except for toilet paper. There's food, there's water, and there's plenty of it. But there's no toilet paper. Cause it's all at the bunker! <laughs> I really actually know that I'm gonna get a little bit of hate for all that toilet paper, but we actually had all that toilet paper before any of this happened. And we're just holding on to it. No, we're passing it out. Like we're giving it to anybody at our place that doesn't have toilet paper. We're like, yeah, take toilet paper home. Because you know what? Toilet paper will come back. I guarantee toilet paper will be in stores again in like nine months from now. <laughs> what this video is actually about though is Earl. Hey, Earl. Looking good, my man. Guys, a good looking truck. So Earl has a flatbed back here. And when I bought him, he had this flatbed. And I thought it was awesome. But turns out I actually need to carry more stuff and flatbeds kind of make it hard for carrying things. So I bought this toolbox and it does have a box on either side. But I bought this toolbox and it works pretty good. But it leaves a little to be desired. So I I think I'm gonna change up the bed. The problem is I actually really like the look <laughs> of this flatbed. But we got it and I thought like, this would be great for when I need to carry huge things like pallets and stuff like that, which we have used it for. But it's hard because we don't have a forklift. I have a Bobcat with a forklift attachment. We've used that. We've borrowed a forklift times when we use it, but it's, with this big flatbed and not actually owning a forklift, it does make it kind of difficult. And I'm thinking that if I ever need a flatbed, I'll just use my flatbed trailer. On a normal day to day, it'd be nice to have something a little different. So I actually think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm taking this bed off and we'll get different. Here's where we're at. I got the front unhooked. It was just bolted there and on the other side there and on the other side. The front had four bolts in it. That was it. And then a bunch of wires, of course. All the, there's like marker lights all around and lights up there and the headache rack. The back had two big bolts here, but then was also welded all around here. So I cut all the welds out and then uh, the other side is proving to be a little more difficult. I lifted it up. It does lift on this side. So that side is free. The front is free. This side, I can't for the life of me get free. So you can see I've been chopping with the grinder wheel in several different directions, trying to cut all this. I don't really know where else to cut either. The problem with trying to break welds is you don't know where it's still holding a lot of the time, so I'm just cutting everything. But I'm working down here and it's up here, it's obviously not gonna work. So I'm gonna try to just jack the back end of this thing up high and hang all the weight from the frame and the axle and everything from whatever's holding it here and hopefully it'll just drop down. I don't know, that's, that's where I'm at now. Let's get to jacking. Uh, I shouldn't have said it like that. Okay, I went ahead and pulled all the wiring out so we don't rip anything. I'm just gonna make this jack go as high as it will go. And we'll see what happens. Come on, baby, break. I did it, I just kept lifting and finally it went boom and just popped off. The back is free, the middle is free, the front is free. Oh shoot, did I, did I do any paint damage here? Yes, I did. <laughs> That bolt right there, jammed into the back of the cab. Cool, I'll have to investigate that in a minute. You may be able to tell there's a pool party going on over here. It sounds fun. I'm over here just working on this stupid truck. Just kidding, Earl, I love you. Okay, moved Earl out here in the pasture because this is where I'm gonna take the bed off because it's probably gonna sit here on the ground for a little bit. 
um, until we figure out what we're gonna do with this bed. So let me walk you through what I have here. This bed probably weighs, I don't know, 1,200 pounds, 1,000 pounds, something like that. It's, it's pretty heavy. And so the only thing I have that will lift it is this Bobcat. The problem is the Bobcat can't really get over its center of gravity. Like, you know, ideally you use like a big, you know, some kind of forklift that has a boom on it. You can get right over it and just pick it straight up and pull it and put it wherever you want. My Bobcat only extends this far. I've got forks on it, but they don't come all the way to the center. So I have this one and this one just going across. That's gonna take a lot of the weight. This one will take most of the weight right from the middle. Then I have three up here. One going straight to the headache rack, right? So that'll keep this thing even distance from that so it won't tilt down. And then I have two coming down to each corner on the front here and they cross. So it goes up to that side and that side. So there's three up top. There's one here, one here. This one on the top will also keep it from pulling too far back. So when I'm pulling back with a Bobcat, it won't just slip off. It should all stay together. I put one here on the back just to keep it from going too far that direction and making all these go slack. I think it'll work. I have one, two, three, four, five, six toe straps tying this thing to that thing. My plan is to just lift it up and either back up the Bobcat or make the truck go forward and just drive out from under this. We probably forgot to unhook something though. There's always something which is gonna be real sketchy because then we have to set it down and go unhook whatever it is. I think we got everything though. I tried really hard. I got all the wires hanging over there. <sighs> Here we go. Let's do this. How we did this without killing anything, I don't know. I really wanted to put it in the back of the old dump trailer, but it was barely too wide. It was gonna mess up the toolboxes on the bed if I put it in here. I wanted to do that so that if we sell this or if we need to move it, it's already right here. I don't have to pick it up again, but I don't know. We don't have any immediate plans with this thing just yet, so it'll stay right here. Hey, Earl, looking a little naked, buddy. Dang, oh yeah. That's great. Look at him, it looks fast now. Earl's like ready for some racing. Yeah, buddy. Here is where I almost knocked out the back window. That bolt slammed into that. That was a close one. That was my first ever boosted launch. Welcome to Whistling Diesel. Yo, Matt, what are you going to do with this truck? Why did you take that awesome flatbed off and do a boosted launch? What are your plans, Matt? The plan is just make this place look like a used car lot, and it's plans are going well, going really well. I got plans. You're gonna like it. I think. I think everyone's gonna be happy with what I'm gonna do with this truck. It has nothing to do with Whistling Diesel. Thank goodness. Doing something kind of fun now, heading to Bunker 2.0, and I was actually up there, it was probably a week or two ago. Yeah, it was like 10 days ago or something. I was up there working, and a guy and his wife and his daughter, their daughter, walked in, and they said that the daughter was a big fan of mine. The dad was wearing a demolition shirt, but I was like, is the daughter really a fan or is he just saying that? And so I was like, oh, you're a fan? She's like, yeah. And I was like, they told you to say that. She's not my target demographic. She's like under 10 years old. And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, what's your favorite video? She was like, I actually was watching you this morning in the hotel and found out they were just traveling. They live in Texas, but they were traveling through and they had stayed in San Antonio last night and wanted to come visit us because we haven't like really hidden the address of the bunker. I haven't given it out yet but it's out there. Don't come to the bunker yet, we're not ready for you. It will be open to the public soon enough. But anyway, they came and I was like, what videos have you seen trying to call out this little girl? She was like, I just watched this morning the one where you gave Remy uh, the dog to your kids for Christmas. And I was like, all right, you are a fan, cool. Like she knew a couple other videos. Like I was like, okay, she's a fan. The dad was also a fan. The mom just probably thought we're all crazy. Um, but anyway, I 
tell the dad about the bunker and he's like who's doing your uh, your data all the wiring and all the hardware that goes in here and I was like I, I don't know if we have anybody yet and he's I was like why he's like that's what I do he installs stuff he has a company that installs all the like cat 5 cat 6 is that what it is I think they have cat 6 now and like alarm wires and speaker wires all that stuff all the data stuff they install that all in buildings he was like we do this kind of stuff and I'd give you a killer deal and I was like I don't even know you but you're demolition, so you're good people. So he came back, and he is up there right now working on our building. So I'm gonna go check it out. I haven't seen him since 10 days ago whenever he came in and just told me he'd do it. So anyway, hired the guy. I don't know anything about him, but he's demolition. I am here with Kevin. What's up, dude? How you doing, man? And you are with your company, right? Yes, Custom IT Solutions. Yes, and so what do you guys do? We do data. We do cameras, we do AV work, yep. we do networking, and server management. speakers and stuff, speakers. right? Like anything that's not like your switches and your outlets and that kind of stuff, you guys do. Yes, yeah. This is the, the data closet is kind of what we're going to make. This is going to be our like control room kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. The whole downstairs is basically done after this last pool. Uh, we're going to start upstairs. So all the all the data terminations for all the offices, there's two per office. Uh, they're all here. This is the other end. This is the termination the rack. And I just realized when you say pull, it's because those are all rolls of wire. That's right. And you're actually, you got to put it through the first hole and then just pull it all the way around, right? Yeah. Crazy. That's probably a lot of work because how long are they? Thousands of feet. Thousands of feet. It's <laughs> a big building. Yeah. Oh, are these cat five, cat, cat six? six? Cat six. Okay, cool. And so you run those all on the whole downstairs so far, right? The whole downstairs is done. Cool. Yeah. So we'll walk around here. You can kind of see he's got them. Let's see. Yeah, you can see it coming down there. You can see it coming through these studs that he did have to drill through, going up and around this doorway here and carrying on around the building. So we'll have little plugs and outlets in every room we need them, wherever we need a computer or whatever, plug Printers, straight in, routers and all that. So yeah, perfect, man. Well, can we find you somewhere on the internet? You can, it's at CITS Waco. CITS Waco. Dot com. Cool, I'll put that in the description below. And uh, yeah, he just literally walked in here and was like, hey, I want to do this for you. And I was like, let's do it. So Kevin, appreciate you, man. Yes, Thank, Thank you. you. Will Matt ever finish his Corvette projects? Does Mayor have any idea how many pew pews Matt has? And what does Matt have in store for Earl? Find out next time on Off The Range. <laughs> also, if you'd like to get one of these shirts, link in the description below just till this weekend only, and then they are gone. Thanks for watching Off The Ranch. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Oh. Hey, what camera is that number? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mare.